Hey guys, how's it going? Happy Friday. Cheers. I actually just said what day it was and I didn't even hesitate. You know why though? It's only because I just wrote my blog. It's only because I just wrote my blog and I knew that it was Friday and I put it up there. So what are you going to do? Anyway, um, happy Friday. I'm actually coming in here. Got my nails done today. Thank God. They were um, needing to be done really by the time I was getting back from Portland earlier this week. Sorry, I was seeing weird things. As usual, um, they were really coming off. And I wrote to Linda and I'm like, when can you take me? She's like, I can't get you until Friday. So <laughs> the amount of time when I really need a new set, the amount of times I have to probably like keep re-gluing just to make sure that they stay on is ridiculous. So by the time, like last night, I was peeling them off and I was looking underneath like, because what's funny, so many people will say to me, if they first meet me, they're like, how can you type with those things? Well, first of all, I've had nails to some degree um, since I was like 19. It's what I like. People say the same thing to me about high heels. They're like, oh my God, I stopped wearing high heels when I was 25. Maybe that explains who you're married to. Um, oh, I just said something nasty. That wasn't nice, I'm sorry. Anyway. I wear high heels all the time. I'm used to it. It's not that difficult to know how to walk in high heels. It's not that difficult to type with nails on. In fact, when I take these off for like a day or whatever, it's really difficult for me to type. Anyway, um, of course now, because I was just on Facebook and I was talking with several different people. Is it Carol? Did you write me on Facebook? Um, and then a couple of other people had asked me with this whole, you know, healthy business travel kind of stuff that we've been promoting uh, with Fit Fleshel, and you certainly know if you've been reading my blog or watching my videos for a while. God bless you. Um, you've known that I travel for work a lot, and I have kind of figured some good stuff out for how to stay active on the road, how to get workouts in. I mean, it's been a work in progress because you know, for several years, I had the best of intentions, but I wasn't putting it all together. Um, but also, how to eat healthy on the road, and. Um, this question that I got from Facebook, and it was very similar to other people, is like, you know, how do you do it? Is it, you know, is it easy? Um, you know, this is a question I get about kind of everything. How do you stay motivated to do it? Um, you know, how, like, what's that, the how behind doing it? Because it's not easy. Well, I'm going to suggest, and I probably wrote this in that one post, that after you put enough effort into something at the beginning, it does become easy. I mean, it's like most people that I start talking to will say, you know, another friend of mine, Chris, wrote to me on Facebook and he's like, Kelly, I gotta tell you, when I see what you post and you'll say, oh, I'm having, you know, egg whites for breakfast and coffee with no sugar and, and whatever, he goes, it just makes me think that's disgusting, I don't want to eat it. Well, I'm sure that when you're still in your world of not working out, and you're eating stuff like McDonald's and pizza and going out for happy hour and you know having all of that kind of food, yeah, you're gonna look at oatmeal with protein powder or a protein pancake or anything that us fitness freaks eat on a regular basis and go, or like you know today, one of the things I'm gonna point out in a second is, is this. This is what I got for lunch and I ate half of it. It's a chicken gyro, but of course I got it without the bread. Um, and somebody would go, well, why would I, want, you know, if I'm going to have a gyro, I'm going to have like, or excuse me, my friend Paul would say, it's not gyro, Kelly, it's gyro. Hopefully I said it the right way. He's probably not watching this. Um, but anyway, I'm all over the place as usual. I, I know that when you're in a, a place where maybe you're just starting to work out, you can look at all of this food and it can seem unappealing to you. Okay? So there's always going to be a, a, a time period, and I do think... There's something to be said about people that are just starting, don't go balls to the wall and say, okay, I'm gonna cut out everything, I'm gonna cut out drinking, I'm gonna cut out sodas, I'm gonna cut out all junk food, and then you know you dive into something like a, a book, like Body for Life, I, you know, I did that back in the day. When you go from one way of living to something that is so extreme, the extremes are, in my opinion, I, I just think, this is just my opinion, I'm not saying I'm, I'm this is the absolute, I just think that if you make such an extreme choice, you're almost setting yourself up for disaster. As opposed to, and you guys might have seen, you know, over the past year and a half, I've made certain gradual changes, and then it made the bigger changes easier to take on. It's been a gradual process for me to get to the point where I am now, where I have to tell you, 
Um, I, I'm often surprised at how food, I still enjoy food, I love to cook. I could watch Food Network or Cooking Channel all day. Food is just not the thing I obsess about anymore. Um, when I'm hearing, feeling my stomach growl and I know that I have to eat, it's more like, okay, you know, it's time to eat and I'm not thinking, ugh, what can I have that's good for me? You know, I really wish I could have McDonald's or I really wish I could have pizza. All of that stuff sounds good to me, but it's just, I'm really eating more to fulfill a need. My stomach, you know, my body needs food to eat. Um, and it's just, I, I guess I have kind of more of a, a take it or leave it attitude with, you know, cheat food, if you will. And, and when I make regular food, I just don't have this overwhelming desire to like cheat or, or, or eat a lot of food like I did in the past. When I would approach dieting in the past, again, everything was such an extreme, you know, everything was off limits and, and, and everything was, was in this little box and that's all I could have that I just was, I found myself so preoccupied with food and what I wasn't allowed to have. And so what I wasn't allowed to have, I obsessed about. If it was soda, if it was coffee, if it was carbs, if it was this or that, I think somehow or another, just this, this process over the past, whatever, year, uh, I've gotten to the point where I don't look at anything as, number one, as really that big of a deal. Number two, I feel so much better right now. I feel better physically. I feel better with what I'm accomplishing. Um, that, you know, the desire to dive in and destroy it all with an eating bender or alcohol or whatever, it's just not there. I can't describe it to you, but sometimes I'm surprised. I'm surprised how, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I'm just surprised by how less often food is coming into my brain as this like, it's, it's more of an afterthought. It's more of a, yeah, I need to eat. It's, you know, it's, oh, I need to have some lunch. What am I gonna have? I go into the refrigerator and I'm not like, what can I have? Oh, I'm not gonna like that. I like everything I'm eating. I like my overnight oats that I make. In fact, I'll tell you this, I'm very calm when I eat now and when I eat, if I'm, like I had half of my overnight oats this morning and I just didn't feel like I was that much more hungry. Don't get me wrong, I'm not putting the wrong message out there that I'm trying to eat you know, next to nothing. I'm just saying, if I wasn't that hungry, I'm just saving it for later. It's like food has just become, that's great, I like it, I can have some more later. Or, you know, hey, when I wanna go out with my friends and have you know, cheeseburger and fries with fries dipped in mayonnaise and, and a margarita, I'm gonna have it, but it's just, I'm not spending the entire week obsessing over when I can cheat. I'm not I'm not thinking the, the whole day, how can I make something that is good for me now taste like what I feel like I'm missing? Do you guys know what I mean when I say that? It used to be that, you know, people would, and there's nothing wrong with this. If it's worked for you, go nutty. It's, people would make like faux brownies, you know, like black bean protein brownies or something. And they're like, this way you can have brownies every day. I'd rather just wait and have a real brownie when I'm gonna have it. Now, again, I'm not saying that it's bad and that the people that, that do that, that wanna have chocolate every day or that wanna have, you know, pancakes and so they make up all of these great things and they use all of these different ingredients to, to make uh, baked goods or whatever that, that taste good but have protein and low fat and low carb, whatever. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying for me, I've come to the point where, I don't know, food is just, it's just, I'm, it's not something I obsess about. It's not something I find that big of a deal. I'm much more calm about eating whether I'm on an indulgence meal, a cheat meal, or a regular meal. I enjoy what I'm eating and I do think you can get to that, po that point. Um, in the beginning, it's, it's a little work. It's a little work to start going um, and looking up, hey, I'm going to Outback Steakhouse. Let me look up on their website the nutritional information so I can make the best choices. Um, but once you get used to that, to answer your question, then it's pretty simple because then you know. I know when I go through Arby's drive-thru. If I'm going through Arby's drive-thru, I know how much the, my favorite things are. And then if I'm going to have, if I'm going to have a, like I know that a medium roast beef, um, and I usually take the, the bread off, so I'll just have the, the beef, but a medium roast beef sandwich, if I'm correct, is 450 calories. So then I take the bread off and I'm assuming most pieces of bread are like 75 to 100 calories. So I'll knock off maybe 150, 200 calories for that and just eat the meat. 
but you can get in your head all of these these variations and then if I if I hadn't eaten anything else I might eat it with the bread okay I know what what affects my body at this point I've got a really good grasp on what affects my body I certainly try for me to avoid uh, bread and, and fake food like that as much as I can but am I gonna die if I have if I go through an Arby's drive through and have that no but in my head I know how many calories I've had I have added that up you know on my um, what's the tracker I use I haven't been using it for the past week or so, especially when I've been sick, because as you guys, as you guys know, I've been oh, my fitness pal. Um, with being sick and all the dental work, I've been eating a lot of strange, you know, just oatmeal and um, mashed potatoes. But it really, it gets. I don't want to say. I, I think you'd asked, is it is it fun? I wouldn't say. You know, it gives me a ton of pleasure. <laughs> It's just something I get used to. And you, once you've invested a certain amount of time in figuring out, you know, and you have an idea of how much, uh, you know, a glass of red wine, 75 to 150 calories. You know that, you know, getting a vodka and tonic is better for you or a Bloody Mary is better for you than a regular margarita or a frozen drink or anything like Kahlua or Bailey's because of the calories. And you have an idea and you can make better choices. You have an idea of what, you know, um, a bunch of scrambled egg whites is. You, you know that when you order at a restaurant and even at room service, you order an egg white omelet, you need to ask for no oil or no butter because they'll still make you an egg white omelet. They're gonna cook it in a vat of butter, which kind of negates the point of having egg whites. So you learn, you get used to it, and it becomes effortless. It's really not that big of a deal. And furthermore, I do believe that once you gradually start removing some of the crap that you're eating, you start gradually adding in more activity everything starts to change and the stuff that you've left behind becomes less important this is what's happening with me what you're accomplishing becomes more important you know seeing your muscles pop out seeing how strong you're getting seeing with the ability that you have in your yoga class or if it's your CrossFit or if it's um, you know a triathlon whatever it is you become more excited about what you're shooting for than what you're leaving behind I mean at the end of the day whatever's in your past wasn't good for you and it's not in your present it's not going to be in your future for a reason. And you should embrace that, and it makes it much easier to not even look back. You know what I'm saying? You just slough it off and go, God, that was like a bad, rotten sandwich, and I don't want to eat that anymore. You know what I'm saying? So I got to go. I've got a massage coming up any second. And um, it's going to be a great Friday. So I'm going to go get a massage. I got my nails done. I'm happy. And I will see you guys. It's sunny out, so I will see you guys uh, tomorrow. Do you think I can shoot another vlog tomorrow? We'll see. I've got to come up with something deeply profound um, so that I can pray on you guys.